Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Shuck, Director of the UCLA Kidney Cancer Program, and I'm thrilled you can join us today on a question I frequently get from my patients. Will this tumor grow if left alone? We're doing a lot of active surveillance monitoring of small tumors that are found incidentally, and many patients are uncomfortable about what the future holds and the risk of it growing if left untreated. So many tumors we find today are found incidentally. They're found on the CT scanner, usually when a patient goes in for another cause. We don't usually image someone's kidney looking for a one or two centimeter renal mass. But if they have abdominal pain, uh, they have flank pain, they end up having shortness of breath, we often scan them and lo and behold, there's a spot on the kidney. And most tumors were likely destined to grow slowly over time, okay? Most tumors are behaving more like the tortoise where it can grow slowly over time and maybe it'll start changing and maybe pose future risk to you long term. Very rarely are tumors more like the, uh, the hair. It's going to go rapidly, moving quickly, and maybe get into trouble much sooner. So many patients want to know if their tumor is destined to grow. And the reason why, patients always ask me, I'm healthy now. Should I get treated now while I'm healthy rather than wait in several years while I'll be less healthy and maybe not be a candidate for treatment? So when we actually follow tumors, the annual rate of growth is actually quite slow for most tumors. Most tumors, I will say, are either guppies or goldfish. Either they're having no growth or 70% of them have growth, growth less than four millimeters a year. There are some tumors that are gonna grow a little bit more quickly, and these are the ones that grow more than five millimeters. I will call them sharks. And these tumors over time probably are gonna be more destined to cause harm. So overall, most of these tumors can probably be initially observed with an initial scan at six months. Uh, and some of our factors can predict the future outcome. So when we try to understand what's the future going to look like, some patients who have a new tumor that's diagnosed, when they want to get as much information to predict the natural history with active surveillance, we may want to get them a biopsy or further imaging to give us more information before they talk about choice of management. That choice of management can be watching it with surveillance, needly uh, ablating it with a needle, uh, or potentially doing a partial or radical nephrectomy. But more information can help patients if they feel uncomfortable about watching a tumor because that information may predict the future rate of growth. So in terms of factors that influence the tumor growth rate, well the subtype of kidney cancer, we know that certain subtypes or flavors of kidney cancer might be a little bit more aggressive. We do know now there are probably about 20 or 22 types of kidney cancers that have been described by the WHO. And fortunately, for most small tumors, the likelihood of them being aggressive, meaning they'll probably hurt you over a three to five year period untreated, is low. Then we have 20%, which are probably benign, and they probably were never destined to spread to other organs, uh, and were never destined to spread at a rapid rate. And then we have 70%, which are lower risk or indolent, meaning probably if they weren't treated, it would be at least a five to 15 year period where they probably would not be destined to hurt you unless they were left in your body long enough because they're probably slower growing and have a different natural history. Now, um, there is an ability for us to potentially get some more information on things like a biopsy. This is what it used to look like when we had only four or five flavors of kidney cancer. But if you get a piece of tissue from a biopsy, you might be able to predict more about the natural history. We do have some non-invasive imaging studies available now, looking at histology, looking at uh, a nuclear medicine scan called the PET-CT with a new tracer called the zirconium uh, that can help predict some natural history. Now, subtype can be suggested on a biopsy again or advanced imaging. Now, what about factors affecting tumor growth? That initial size is very helpful. Okay, a tumor that is found and is small might be one centimeter, maybe it's seven centimeters, okay? But the size might influence the risk of it being benign or the risk of it being aggressive. So over, you know, here in a one centimeter tumor, it might have actually a 50% chance of being a benign tumor in a woman. And the larger a tumor gets, the higher risk it is to become, uh, that it is malignant, and the higher chance that malignant, that tumor is aggressive. So again, the initial size is going to be an important factor in understanding, is it cancer or not, or is it more likely to be an aggressive cancer or not? 
clearly the larger size more likely to be cancer and the more likely it is to be an aggressive cancer. Now, um, size is easily assessed on imaging. We can tell if a tumor is two centimeters or three centimeters on an imaging study. And the initial size dictates probably the more aggressive uh, potential and also the more likely a tumor is likely to stay on surveillance if it started off at a small size. Another factor is the grade. Now, a tumor grade is how ugly it looks under the microscope. The appearance of the tumor may provide insight in the natural history. The more abnormal the cell looks under the microscope, the likely the quicker the growth. And in kidney cancer, we have grade one through four. A uh, grade one is considered a low-grade tumor. I consider that happy sitting there, lying around, lounging around, not wanting to move. Okay, versus a high-grade tumor, these are bad guys. These are the devils, the ones with bad intentions under the microscope. They look really nasty. And grade can be assessed on a biopsy. If you look under the microscope, you have the potential to take a look and say, does it look more high or low grade? Clearly, there's some heterogeneity, but most small tumors, a biopsy will give you a good sample to understand how aggressive a tumor looks. Now, the location, the tumor location may impact the aggressiveness. There is some information that we've gathered over time that the more peripheral a tumor is, the more likely it is potentially low grade and a little bit more uh, uh, likely to grow slower. We do know that polar tumors, tumors at the top or the bottom, are less likely to have high grade elements. So a polar tumor would be one up here. Those potentially are a little uh, more likely to be low grade. But a tumor that is kind of in the hilum or central, they're more likely to be aggressive. Um, and you can assess the location on, on imaging. Now, uh, patients always ask us over time if it's left alone, if it is growing, is it going to start growing and causing me symptoms? Well, the kidney is very well protected. You see here that tumor uh, with the arrow in white. It's surrounded by a lot of fat. It's also surrounded by a lot of muscle. And the majority of these tumors will not cause symptoms even if they grow. Thank you so much for your time and attention. You're always welcome to visit us at UCLA. Our kidney cancer program is entering its 30th year, uh, and we continue to learn more and help many patients. If you are interested in getting more information, we have an extensive video library. Hover over that QR code. If you want to help us support making more videos or potentially helping our research program, uh, you can help us as well. Any support is appreciated. We have more information that can be found on the UCLA Health Org website uh, with good information on treatment and our many providers. Thank you so much for your time and attention.